I'm Adam from The Army Painter, and today we're going to show you how to paint up yellow armor. Now, yellow is one of the trickier colors to paint, but using our color primer sprays can actually make it very simple. When we debuted this product over a decade ago, we launched these painting guides. They're still handy, and you can still find them on our website. This painting guide showed you how to paint sci-fi armor using the Army Painter color primer system. While we're going to be painting power armor in this tutorial, the same techniques can be applied to any yellow models in any faction or game system that you might be painting. For example, maybe your Baratheon army from A Song of Ice and Fire. So let's check out the paints that we're going to be needing for this tutorial. We're going to prime the model with Color Primer Demonic Yellow, and we're going to add some shading with Fur Brown before working up our yellow highlights. When priming the model, make sure that you give the can a very good shake and you're going to spray at a distance of no greater than 20 centimeters. When you're done spraying, turn the can upside down and spray until pigment stops coming out of the nozzle. This is how you clean it. Now that we've primed the model with Color Primer Demonic Yellow, we're going to move on to applying some highlights and some shadows using an airbrush. If you don't have an airbrush at home, don't worry. You can fast forward to the parts in this tutorial where we're using traditional brushwork, and you can get a very similar effect. But I wanted to showcase how you can add some depth, some contrast, and some shading using the airbrush in our brand new airbrush medium. So this might seem a little bit backwards to some people, but after we've applied our prime coat of Color Primer Demonic Yellow, I'm gonna take some Fur Brown. This is a great color for adding some shading to yellow armor because it's a very orangish, reddish tone brown. Now I'm gonna go into some of the areas like the insides of the legs and around the hip and the bottom areas of the armor and I'm gonna apply this shadow. I like to call this post shading. So we're going to apply this shadow after we've applied our base coat of Demonic Yellow. Don't worry if you get a little bit unwieldy here or spray a little bit outside the lines because we are going to fix this up with the airbrush in later steps. So we're applying this post shadow to the under parts of the model, underneath the arm, underneath the hands, on the bottom areas of the backpack, and just the inside corners and joints of our model. We're going to continue applying this fur brown into all of the areas of the model where we imagine and want a shadow to appear. And you can already see the gradation from yellow to brown already start to take place. Next we're going to move to matte white and we're going to apply this very thinly to the top areas of the model. I know this looks very drastic, this looks very severe. I promise you it's all gonna come back together in the next step of this tutorial. What we're doing here is we're adding a pre-highlight and we're gonna go back to Demonic Yellow and apply this over top of the matte white to really give a rich and vibrant yellow hue. So we're just applying this matte white to the highlight areas. This is gonna be good when we get into the brush highlights later because it allows you to kind of figure out the model in these early stages where you want to apply these focus points and highlights to the model. Very simply, you're just going to pick the uppermost areas and pull like right here on the shoulder pad a nice radius highlight with that matte white like here on the backpack as well. And there you have it. Next, we're going to take some demonic yellow. We're going to thin this down again, one part airbrush medium to two parts war paint. We're going to apply this all over the model. It's okay if you spray this over top of the fur brown. That's actually intended, that's what you want. You can see here, you still have some of that shadow from the fur brown worked its way into the recesses and into the shadow areas of the model. This gives a very rich and vibrant yellow effect. Now that we've finished with our base coat on the model, we are going to move on to the washing stage. So I'm taking Quick Shade Soft Tone right out of the bottle, and I'm going to apply this into the recesses of the model. I am not going to apply an all-over wash here. This is a focused wash, so I'm just finding these panel lines and recesses. And with a character brush, I'm just going to apply the shading to these areas. Now you could apply an all-over wash if you wanted to. It's just going to darken down the model a little bit more. If you do decide to go that route, you may want to go back and clean up some of the flat and broader panels with demonic yellow, or you may want to apply a yellow dry brush to the model. 
I find that it really helps when applying this wash to use a slightly smaller brush so you can really work those pigments into those fine crevices and details on the model. A character brush or even a detail brush is great for this stage. Now some areas like here on the boots and the inner thigh on the model and some of the areas that are deeper set into the model, I will apply an all over wash, that's okay. But some of the areas that are brighter and more pronounced, I want to just apply a more focused wash. So continue along the entirety of the model and wash in that quick shade soft tone. Make sure it's not pooling up too much, especially on such bright armor like this yellow because we don't want to dinge it up. We don't want to dirty it up too, too, too much. If you do notice that it does begin to pool, go ahead and take your brush and wick it away and work those pigments into the recesses. Here on the shoulder pad, I'm just going to apply a very simple panel highlight and allow those pigments to find their way into the recesses. I'm actually forcing their way into the recesses by only applying a panel highlight. Now I've gone ahead and painted in some of the details of the model to give the model a more finished appearance while I paint in these highlights. So I'm taking demonic yellow now and with a character brush, I'm just tracing in our initial chunky highlight, as I like to call it, across the model. You can be a little bit looser with this highlight because we are going to refine it in later steps. I'm just finding the extreme ridges and areas on the model where light would catch, and I'm applying this demonic yellow. When I am using an airbrush to add a highlight to the model, I do like to use my final highlight color through the airbrush as my first highlight when I start applying the brushwork. This really gives a realistic and natural tonality to the model. I've thinned down our demonic yellow a little bit with some clean water. Our war paints are all water-based, 100% water-based, and they thin down perfectly with clean water. I'm tracing these highlights just very quickly, but patiently at the same time. I'm just finding all of the areas of interest on the model and picking out those details with this thin down application of demonic yellow. The beauty of our color primer system is that they have a 100% matching war paint. If you do find yourself painting outside the lines a little bit, or maybe you painted outside the lines while you were painting in the, this pouch here on his holster, you could go back and paint over that brown paint with your demonic yellow and you're gonna get a 100% color match. In some areas on the model, you will be able to just trace the edge of the brush along the ridges and the edges of the model for a very simple highlight. But in other areas, you're really gonna rely on that thin down paint and a very patient and steady hand to pull those highlights. After we finished applying our demonic yellow, I've added some moon dust to my wet palette. I'm gonna make sure I get this nice and thin and with a detail brush, I'm going to apply the final highlight to the model. Make sure you get a nice loading of the pigments from your war paint on the bristles of the brush. I'm just giving the model a once over to make sure that my demonic yellow has dried and find the areas of interest that I want to highlight. Now this highlight, unlike our first chunky highlight of demonic yellow, we're just gonna find the topmost areas where the light would catch these hard edges and I'm going to apply our moon dust to them. You wanna be very patient and very careful here. Use a very steady hand to pull this extreme highlight. And as you apply this final highlight of moon dust to the extreme areas on the model, you really get an interesting appearance because you've gone all the way from that dark demonic yellow that we shaded with fur brown. We've applied our soft tone wash and we're working up those recesses. We're giving it a really three-dimensional realistic appearance. I always say that the first place a person looks at and focuses on when they're taking a look at your model is the helmet or the face on the model. So you wanna be very careful and very precise here to pick out those details very cleanly, like here on the brow and the ridge of the mask and underneath these glowing red eyes here on the model. Thinning down your paints really benefits you here because it gives you supreme control of this highlight and it adds at a benefit of the paint not drying out on the bristles of your brush.
many areas of the model, you can just trace that highlight in. This, as I always say, is highlighting on easy mode. With the paint loaded up on the bristles of your brush, you're just going to trace the edge of that paint along the raised areas of the model. Of course, not all the areas of the model can be traced on with the edge of the brush. Sometimes you will have to pull that highlight. In this instance, you just wanna be very careful, have a very steady hand, take your time. It's gonna save you a lot of time in the long run fixing up those mistakes if you do it right the first time. I like to weather my models and the way I do that is I take my final highlight and I apply a small dot of that highlight in sporadic areas on the model and usually try and focus on an edge and find somewhere nearby to give it a realistic chipping effect. Then I'll go back with a darker paint, in this case, a dark gray. I think I'm using Necromancer Cloak here and I'm just applying that Necromancer Cloak with a detail brush to the very center of those chips. After the highlighting and chipping is complete, our yellow armor model is finished. You can really see that using the color primers as a starting point for your models, that it saves you loads of time, especially if you're painting complete armies. When used in combination with our war paints and quick shade washes, you have a very simple and effective system to get your models painted faster and get you more time for gaming. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I enjoyed painting up this model for you today. Remember that you can apply these same techniques to any power armored model, whether it's your Lamenters or Imperial Fists. You can apply the same techniques to your Guild Ball Force or your Baratheon Army. Remember the magic of miniature painting is that it can be as simple or as challenging as you'd like it to be. With the right techniques, you're sure to achieve some great results. We'll see you next time.